my laboratory is studying the mechanisms underlying stability and plasticity of neural circuits. Specifically, we focus on a part of the brain called hippocampus, which is important for episodic memory of everyday facts and special memory. In this study, we explored the role of IGF-1 receptor in hippocampal synaptic transmission. IGF-1 receptor has been discovered as a master regulator of lifespan. Reduction in the receptor level delay aging in diverse species, including worms, flies, mice, and most important, humans. In addition, this receptor regulates brain development and neurogenesis. But we don't really know if it directly controls transfer and processing of information. Each project has a story behind it. The year I joined the lab, Eud Cohen and Andrew Dillon had just published a cell paper showing how Alzheimer's disease pathology can be rescued by reduction in IGF-1 receptor expression level in mice model. This work supports the idea that neurodegenerative disorders may be delayed by slowing down the aging process. However, other studies show that injections of IGF-1 can promote neurogenesis and delay cognitive deficits. Given this conflict, we understood that we had to investigate first what is the physiological role of IGF-1 receptor in the hippocampus, which is especially vulnerable to Alzheimer's disease. First, we asked where IGF-1 receptors are located in the hippocampal neurons. As resolution of light microscopy is diffraction limited, we collaborated with Sylvia Rizzoli and Martin Helm, who used super-resolution dual-color STED microscopy. We learned that IGF-1 receptors are mostly present in the presynaptic site of hippocampal synapses. Next, we asked if IGF-1 receptors are active at synapses under resting conditions without external trigger. To answer it, we used fluorescent resonance energy transfer, FRET, to estimate the receptor activation at single synapse level. Upon activation by IGF-1 ligand, the receptor homodimer undergoes conformational changes. These structural changes are reflected by increase in FRET. Correspondingly, decrease in FRET will reflect receptor inactivation. Unexpectedly, we found that we can only reduce the activation of this receptor, either pharmacologically or by genetic knockdown but not increase it by IGF-1 application, meaning that in fact IGF-1 receptors are fully activated under resting conditions. Tonic activation of IGF-1 receptor produces two opposite effects on synaptic transmission. It enhances evoked transmission, but suppresses spontaneous transmission. At the very beginning, we identified intracellular calcium as the key regulator. IGF-1 receptor blockade increased resting calcium levels while inhibiting evoked calcium transients. Then we asked what causes this complex pattern of calcium regulation. Following screening of many possible candidates, we identified the mitochondria, main energy producing compartment in neurons, as the central player. Mitochondria perform many functions, including calcium buffering and energy production in the form of ATP. Using novel imaging tools, we were able for the first time to detect mitochondrial calcium transients evoked even by a single action potential and monitor the amount of ATP at single synapses. Altogether, our results indicate that IGF-1 receptor to mitochondria signaling constrains spontaneous vesicle release by calcium buffering while maintaining evoked vesicle release by stimulating ATP production. As a result, IGF-1 receptor activity increases evoked to spontaneous transmission ratio, which may reflect signal-to-noise ratio in hippocampal synapses. Interestingly, we found that synaptic IGF-1 receptor signaling is abnormally active under resting conditions at very early stages in Alzheimer's model mice. Removal of this tonic activity rescues hyperactivity at excited resynapses. This study raises two central questions. Whether small molecule inhibitors of the IGF-1 receptor, which are currently under development for different types of cancers, may be of potential therapeutic value for Alzheimer's patients, and whether reduction in resting brain activity may delay aging.